it's not about lifting ourselves up. It's about lifting the profession up. So, you know, sometimes you just yeah. have to take one for the team, take one for the profession. And yes, you might really want to post that. Um, and yes, you didn't sign up for nursing to be censored, but also you have to think about the profession yeah. as a whole, what we're trying to do and how we're trying to build this profession yeah. and keep it what it is for the most part. Yeah. Or improve it and not make it worse. You don't want to yeah. degrade it. And then, yeah. and then like stay away from like things that could be triggering for patients. Like that is triggering for a lot of patients, you know? And um, even though I don't agree, they should have been fired per mm -hmm. se, there should have been consequences because especially women who are having babe, like that, that right there, that, that wasn't a good thing to do. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Nurse Boss Ship. It's your girl, Dr. Kiana Jones. And Crystal Parker. Yeah, we coming in. This is a, uh, this has to happen. We have to have this conversation. This mm -hmm. is kind of, it's, I wouldn't call it an impromptu, but it was one of those things where we were like, okay, we got to talk about it because it's trending, but there's a lot of... I don't want to say misinformation, but there's a lot of opinions out there yeah. and a lot of them does not come from us as nurses. Right. And right. so we felt that this would be one of those times where we had to talk about it. And if you haven't thought of what we're talking about yet, <laughs> it is the two, the nurses that were on TikTok and yep. they were worked for L and D at Emory hospital and they were talking about their icks. So we felt like it would be time to have a conversation about social media and yeah. the impact that it has, but also what we think about the video, which went viral over and over and over again. Yes. Um, so Crystal and I haven't talked about it. So this is going to be like our, our raw opinions about it, um, which I love that because it doesn't mean yeah. that we may be on the same page. Like we may not agree on how right. it was handled. So that's kind of fun. <laughs> right, 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 so um, first of all, let's just talk about our raw emotions on how we felt when it started going viral. What, what did you feel about it all, Crystal? Um, well, first I had heard about this ick challenge, but I hadn't seen a video on it yet. I still really haven't. That's like the only ick video that I've still seen up until now is this video. Um, mm -hmm. And then I saw the video and my first reaction was, um, well, that's we nurses talk about. We talk about our icks all the time. Um, mm -hmm. But then I had to realize mm -hmm. it was on social media. Um, and then I heard that. Now, I first heard that someone leaked the video, that they didn't mean to put it yeah. out. Um, I don't, mm -hmm. I still don't know if we had have clarification on that. Um, so, yeah. you know, if it was leaked, well, that's just a private conversation that we have. Um, but if it was put out, then I have different opinions on that. Um, right. But seeing it, and it's just such a hard line because nurses have icks in every department, right? Just anyone at their job has icks about customers who call in. I remember in collections, you know, we had icks with customers, <laughs> customers calling in. Um, I'm sure the grocery store clerks yeah. have icks. Um, but I know as nurses, they're saying we're held to a higher standard. Um, so that's yeah. kind of where the controversy comes in. So those were my initial yeah. thoughts when the video was going um, viral. What That's funny you, you say that about the nurses. It's funny you say that about like nurses being held to a higher standard because I I did um, a live about that when it happened with the young lady who slammed into that the cars in LA yeah. who was a nurse. Remember, she yeah. was a travel nurse. And I was like, mm -hmm. we're held to a higher standard. And I do agree with us being held to a higher standard. Um, I, I guess where I what bothered me the most is the lack of grace for these nurses. Yeah. And I, I agree. They shouldn't have did it. I right. agree that it was definitely with it. It was tasteless. It was, yeah. they did not think about the, um, the patients. They, they just didn't think it through. I don't right. know if it was shared. Um, yeah. 
with their approval or not. I still, I was trying to research that. I couldn't really find that. I don't know if that's just like a, what people are saying or what, but I, I just felt like, damn, <laughs> like I, we, okay, fine. They did wrong. Yes. Reprimand them. They shouldn't have done that. But I felt like they were being punished based on the ick as if it is a result of their nursing care. Now we don't know that. So mm-hmm. because because I have an ick, or I, and by the way, I didn't know what the heck an ick was right. <laughs> until this went viral. I don't keep up with those trends, but right. I definitely, when I found out what it was, I was like, oh yeah, I got icks. I had icks as a, a nursing supervisor. I had icks yeah. at every on every yeah. unit I ever worked, but that didn't translate into my care. Exactly. And so what happened was it was like all of these people who. I'm sure had bad experiences. I'm not saying that it was true or not, but they may have had horrible experiences during their most vulnerable times. Now they're saying, oh, this happened here. And oh, I had this experience. And you're trying to link the two. And I think that is unfair. They could be the best nurses. Mm -hmm. They could have received Daisy Awards. Mm -hmm. They They did something that was a poor judgment. But does that mean that they're providing horrible care to their patients? It does not mean that. Right. (laughs) It it could be the ones who... Go ahead. I was just saying, I was um, thinking about it too of, you know, they're saying, oh, when a patient's family comes and asks a question, and that's that's when you get into, if you're not a nurse, you don't understand. Do we not want our patients to family to come up to the nursing station. Of course we don't care, but are those, those families that come on now, you're, you're, you're coming up here a little bit too much. And of course, those are Mm -hmm. the ones we're highlighting. So as you, as you said, I remember, and I always talk about this when I started to know that I was burnt out with um, bedside nursing is when patients will roll through that gurney and I'm rolling my eyes because it's yet another one, but I never displayed that to patients. It never translated to my care. So just because that's how I was feeling because of, um, all the things I had to do as a nurse or all the things, you know, that day they're slamming us back to back with patients. I was annoyed, but that doesn't mean I would express yes. that through my patient care and make my patient feel any, any type of way yes. or any different. So yeah, I definitely understand what yes. you're saying when it comes to that. And it, and, and how I, I, how in my nursing practice, when I worked at the bedside, one thing I constantly reminded myself now, an astute nurse will do this, which and I still had icks, but mm-hmm. I constantly reminded myself that this is new to my patients. Yes. And so even though I see this every time I come to the hospital, mm-hmm. they're vulnerable, their right. families are affected, pops and moms may be in the hospital who have never been in hospital all 80 yeah. years of their life. And now yeah. they're in there, their whole family dynamics is shook up. So yeah. I have to give of myself every single time, like it's the first time. That's so true. And that means energetically, I'm giving of my energy, my mental, my physical, mm-hmm. all of that to be present with this family. And given, and that's, that's fine. I'm a nurse. That's, that's what I do. But I feel like, you know, because just because I have the ick doesn't mean I don't have the sense and the mm-hmm. compassion enough to know that and be intentional mm-hmm. about providing that experience for my patients. Right. Now, some of these people out here on these YouTube channels, they, they all got, oh, you signed up for that. That pisses mm-hmm. me off. Mm-hmm. Nobody right. signs up to give the way we give. Mm-hmm. And they really get on my nerves with that because they and don't someone, understand. And someone else had but, said on the, on the YouTube, they said, um, I forgot what they said. You, it, you should be, it's a privilege. It's a privilege like career. Like we were handed this. We went to school for this. We studied, we took tests. We had to pass boards. It's not a privilege. Like a privilege is something you're, anyone can do this, but you have to do the work. So we're not privileged yeah. to be a nurse. Like we put in the work to be yeah. a nurse. And, um, and yes, like we signed up to do this. We didn't sign, I, I, we could do, we could let that go viral. Like, did I sign up to be abused, yeah. cussed out in the ER, spit on, peed on, um, yelled at for nothing? I didn't say that. But everybody's silent. Right, right. Exactly. Everybody's silent about that. I don't see the out. I have yet to see. Yes. I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> I have yet to see a viral video mm-hmm. of a nurse getting abused. Yep. Of an, I mean, for real. 
Mm-hmm. It's it's like unless it's like something that's like on the news because they got their pants bashed in from a psych right. patient. Like, right. but what about all the times these people mm-hmm. did not say that that's how they treat these nurses? Didn't say this is what I do to them. It's just it's annoying. Right. Yes, they shouldn't have said it on TikTok. I get that, but yeah. like, where is the grace? Exactly. Where's There's the grace no. for us? Like, are you kidding me? There is none. And then, so Emory, uh-huh. Emory released a statement saying that, you know, basically that they don't, you know, condone that. And, you know, that's not the culture they want to create or that they create there. And then, of course, you had people coming forward to talk about their mm-hmm. experiences at mm-hmm. Emory. Now, here's what bothers me about that. And I'm going I'm to let you say, not there, nothing about the patients because their experience is their experience. And some of them have very traumatic mm-hmm. experiences from their perspective. Mm-hmm. But I think people miss what their experience were. They're connecting that to this ick video. Mm-hmm. But when they're sharing the story, it's a result of the orders from doctors yeah. <laughs> that the nurses are executing on. Mm-hmm. I think they don't understand that we don't write orders. We follow mm-hmm. the orders from the physician. Mm-hmm. Now, whether they handled that tact tactfully or not, or I don't know their delivery, especially right. for people being in vulnerable times. But what I did notice as we were watching those videos is a lot of the women were African-American. Mm-hmm. And one thing I know and that we know about maternal mortality and more mater- maternal uh, uh, morbidity is directly related to African American women or minority women. Yeah. So, is it because of the system in which we are in? Because we know that that stands true no matter what state you're in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But now you're trying to connect that, and I and I know there was one young lady who said that one of the nurses were one who um who was her nurse or was in the room with her or something like that. But, um, but we can't, we have to be careful with these broad strokes. Yeah. Of like, Oh yeah. They, my son died like her baby, like that. That's crazy. Like her experience was so traumatic and it's like, but I want people to like, we have to ask more questions. Like what is it because of this ick video? Like, or is it because of the care that was provided? Now that's a whole systemic, like the hospital, the doctors, the nurses, right. like the whole healthcare team, did they fail you? Right. As a collective. And I feel like this video kind of made it to where it was like, yeah, it's the nurse's fault. Mm-hmm. But you guys, we can't do nothing unless the doctor say so. And it that was includes said. admitting you. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. I was just going to say it was even said, um, my nurse told me the doctor said like, yes, because the doctor said like the doctor is the one to make yeah. um, these decisions now. Yes. Delivery nurses with attitudes, burnt out nurses, you know, they might not be as tactful in delivering that or um, really putting themselves in the patient's position at that time to um, be more of a caretaker for them and really walk them through that emotionally. Um, But it is all left up to the doctors. And I, I, because I have my own birth story, um, about that. How so was yours? I don't know if, okay. So I delivered at my hospital, my first birth, I was induced. Mm-hmm. And, um, mm-hmm. and, and then I know there's some kind of issue with like the induction and the taking a shower. I think it's a point of like, you just got here. Let's get Why you. didn't you already do that before? Right. You got like, here. Let's, get right. You tucked in. <laughs> let's get you tucked in. Yeah. No one's saying, Oh, why are, why are they asking for food? It's just a thing. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. people come to the ER, they want to eat immediately. It's like, relax. Like you just yeah. got here. Um, so I, I, I was, I wasn't, I, I had a scheduled induction. Um, I had a travel nurse at the hospital that I worked at. I had a travel nurse and, um, she ended up breaking my water. Now I, I'm, I'm an ER nurse. I know nothing about L and D as we know as nurses, one floor is different from the next. So mm-hmm. I didn't know what was mm-hmm. going on. Um, I definitely would tell people now that I would recommend them having a doula, um, just somebody who, mm-hmm. who knows how this goes and can be there to speak yeah. up for them. Um, Absolutely. now my, my cousin is in L and D and her complaint at her totally different hospital, County hospital, um, I go to a private hospital. She says that she got into it with doctors because they break water or yeah, they want to break the water all the time. I didn't know that was 
a thing. Um, so oh. this nurse took it upon herself to break my water. I feel like she thought out. Is she that what the nurses don't do in L and D? Because I don't, I I don't know nothing about L and D. Is that well, they not broke my water and then she kind of said like, "Don't tell anybody I did that." So I what? think that she did. She did. And from my from my understanding or from my quick. It, it, it all happened so fast. I feel like she thought yeah. she was helping me. I felt like she thought she was speeding it along um, because uh, uh, talking to my cousin, that's why they break the water to help progress things. Well, my water ended up being broken far too long. So I got the choreo infection, which is what you get when your water mm-hmm. is broken for too long. My water was probably broken about 11 hours. Um, I wasn't ready for it to be broken. I was a few liter, well, milliliter short of a uh, actual hemorrhage. I can't remember the numbers, but say if like 2000 milliliter blood loss, I was at like 1500. So I was close to that. My baby had to go to NICU. I pushed for four hours, which is another thing that I literally pushed for four hours, which most people say, well, after two, usually they schedule, start thinking about C-section. So I always think of, was I not heard in that moment? I didn't know what was going on. So is it because I was black? I wouldn't say that. I just feel that labor and delivery is such a a vulnerable um, floor. And even as nurses, if you don't work there, you don't know what's going on. So to have someone be um, there to support you, I would always... um, recommend that but I try to think too um like are those icks are are those things because I was a black woman and they did that you know it's it's such a fine line because I know people when things go wrong they want someone to blame and not to say that nurses doctors healthcare systems aren't to blame for Mm -hmm. issues people go through but I, I think a lot of times people don't understand how the hospital system works and that's not to be dumped on the nurses because we are the face of the hospital. And I feel that's what happens a lot of time. We are the face. We are the ones they see. Mm -hmm. So we get the blame for everything, which isn't right. That was a lot. That's crazy. (laughs) I'm like, I don't know what to say to that, but you know, what's even crazier though, as I'm hearing you talk, Mm -hmm. I can one up you with my experience at 17. I, yeah, I, you know what? It's, it's funny because we kind of, mm-hmm. and we're two black women and right. we had, tra- so, okay. So I go in, I'm 17 years old with my daughter. This is 25 years ago, mind <laughs> you. So things have changed, but of course I knew nothing. My right. mom knew nothing. The de- father of my daughter knew nothing. So we go to the hospital and they're like, you in pain? And I'm like, yeah, but I wasn't in a lot of pain, but I was like, shoot, yeah, I'm in pain because I didn't want to get to the part that I knew was coming. Right, right, right. And so at this time, they were giving Demerol. Okay. Not not any, like the one, they would never give Demerol now, uh-huh. ever, to a pregnant mm-hmm. woman. I got Demerol. Ooh. About 15 minutes after they gave me maybe maybe even less than that maybe 10 10 or 15 minutes after they gave me the demerol her heart rate tanked Mm -hmm. all i knew was i was sitting there i remember i was high as a kite but Uh i remember i was in the bed and the next thing i know the doctor came over me she's like we're gonna have to take you in for an emergency c-section and i was like huh imagine i'm 17 i'm like okay like i didn't even Mm -hmm. know they had me like get on all fours they were trying to like stimulate the baby uh, and next thing i know i was asleep and i woke up and i had a baby really that was my experience well, do you have i a don't i had a i was under general anesthesia oh wow yes i woke up and with a baby I didn't experience nothing to do with the delivery process, anything like that. I know what's even crazier though, is that I'm, I'm talking to you about it after I hear your story and I'm like, shit, I I went through something traumatic. Uh I still don't blame the nursing staff Mm -hmm. per se, but like, it's just true of what we as, as African-American women, what we experience. Um, And then with, with, you know, that's crazy. (laughs) That 
it's absolutely yeah. crazy that first of all they gave me such large amounts of Demerol at the age of 17 mm-hmm. I probably should not have even received that they should have right. said you know I'm gonna give you a little something but right. not nothing crazy um and then the fact that I had to go under general led to like my healing what took a long time you know mm-hmm. at 17 I should have been able to right quick. bounce back nope yeah. It was a, yeah, no, it was a long, it was a long healing process. And so I, I'm saying that to say, even in the presence of our experiences that are not so pleasant, I still feel like, you know, I, I had, I had decent nurses from what mm-hmm. I re- recall. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I just wish that, you know, first of all, I wish they wouldn't have did it period, because that just was not a good move. Um, yeah. But I just wish that we got a little more grace, like, for what we do. I, I hate that, which brings me to my next question, Crystal. Like, what do you even feel about TikTok, Instagram? And I mean, I, I'll i tell you what I feel first. Okay. <laughs> it's being glamorized on TikTok. And that irks the shit out of me. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. And I be seeing them, like, and they, you know, all, it's like, Dude, why are y'all in it? And it's it's a good career. Don't get me wrong. If you love it, then great. But the, you don't feel like it's so sensationalized now because of social media. Like everybody is doing a day in the life of a nurse. It's it reminds me of the sexy nurse Halloween costume, but except they don't have a. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about that? Maybe is it more new new nurse? You feel before they get. <laughs> Well, definitely. definitely i feel like it's out. more numerous i i wonder but if I feel like you don't... go ahead i was gonna say but you don't feel like it's like it is the new nurses of course they're they're definitely more into social media but like yeah it's not sexualized but it's like it's hyper sensationalized like it's just like I don't know. Tell me what you... I, maybe maybe I know it's in our world because well, we're nurses. Well, for one, you like, know, I'm like horrible at actually consuming. Not to say that I don't consume um, social media, yeah. but um, you mean the new nurse... I mean, you mean the nurse life, glamorizing the life of a nurse. Yeah. Yeah, it's and like, I think it's... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially, especially the money and what they can buy and their trips. Um, and this and that is definitely, definitely sensa- sensationalized. Um, and not enough of the hard moments, I would say, or not enough of yeah. what we really like go through. I just be feeling like it's either like the ones who are like out there with their, you know, glamorous life, or it's the one who are like, you know, showing themselves crying in the hallway after somebody Mm -hmm. died. And that's really weird to me too. And then you have the ones that's just like dancing in the supply room. It's just like, what what does this come to? (laughs) Or how they say like people do one TikTok video and then it's, you guys have nothing better to do than sit and do TikTok videos. Yeah. Yeah. It's nighttime. We And and honestly, when COVID hit, I remember being like, let them have some enjoyment. Like we are really, you know, sacrificing ourselves at this moment. I feel like that's when it boomed though Mm -hmm. during COVID, like at the Mm -hmm. beginning. And now it's just like, okay, you guys, like, but don't forget we are a profession and we do want to be taken seriously. We don't want to be known as a profession that's just on TikTok, um, you know, with our cute scrubs on and our, you know, Yeezy shoes that we wear to work. (laughs) Like we don't want to be, we're more than that. Yeah. You know, so that's the old person in me, the old nurse, the old school nurse, I guess you could call it in me. That's like, okay, you guys, how do we find, my question to you, Crystal, is how do we Mm -hmm. find, do you think we find the balance? (sighs) Because we are influencers. We're on, we're on these platforms as well. So how do, how do you find the balance? Um, I don't know if we can, I don't know if we can find the balance collectively as a nurse because we have, there's so many of us and there's so many ranging from like those baby nurses who, you know, because some people, um, had a family of struggle and then they come to being a nurse and it's like, it's probably mind blowing to them how much they could potentially make, especially with these travel nursing figures. Um, so I don't think that I wish that, yes, we would take our profession 
much more serious um, so that we wouldn't even have to talk about this. But I don't know if we can collectively get a balance as a nursing profession to, to get people to realize those videos that you're doing are bringing us down or making us look bad. Um, but yeah. for self, I just try to, I always try to think of, and probably to my disadvantage or too much, just try to think of what the other person on the other side of that video could be thinking. Um, you know, of course you post some things that you want to get a reaction out of. Um, but I always want to uphold my profession and, and, um, and have people looking at me as a professional being a nurse. So that's kind of what I do to modify or to kind of gatekeep what I post on um, mm. my social media. Um, but I think yeah. it's hard because you have to, there's so many eyes watching and you always just have to remember that. I just think that people outside of nursing don't get it. Like they think we're yeah. just supposed to always just pour and pour, like you were saying, and have this big giving yes. heart and never complain about anything and love mm -hmm. their patients and love their doctors. And this is what you eat, sleep and breathe is nursing. So and it's sacrificing. like, so yeah, sacrificing all the sacrifices. For and that's just, that's just not the case. So it's just like, my bigger question is like, when are other people going to get it? <laughs> like, when are other people, like you yeah. said, going to give us that grace um, and really understand, you know, because they love to say like, oh, nurses are angels and you guys have such a hard, hard job and you guys work so hard. And I hear, I feel like I hear the community saying that, but then when shit hits the fan like this, it's like, oh, we want them fired. And I, I have been thinking, okay, do, did they fire these nurses because of what they said or did or because of the outpour um, and because of of how everyone was coming in saying that they got horrible treatment from this hospital. Um, so they were kind of just the sacrificial lambs of the hospital to get fired because of that reason. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I just, I just wish that, um, we could, I mean, I'm, I'm all for being on social media. Of course, I would be a hypocrite if I said, don't be on social media. But now what's happening is they're essentially building a case for these healthcare organizations to try to, um, what do you call it, control our social media. Mm -hmm. And so you'll see they'll, they'll, like some of them are creating these uh, policies that you can't even record at all in the hospital. They mm -hmm. don't even want you recording at all now in the hospital. I don't care a supply room. I don't care if yeah. it's just your face. If they see that you're in the hospital, you could potentially get terminated. Um, another one, one of them are trying to say like, you can't even have a TikTok to work and work for them. Like it's, it's getting that <laughs> bad. It's wow. getting that bad. And so I just, I don't, I, yeah. And I don't know that there is a balance that, that is going to uh, be able to exist. I don't have the answer to that, but I will say it gets even more difficult when now you got the doxing and you got people trying to cancel people. Mm -hmm. I seen a whole TikTok on this girl basically saying that she supported other nurses going, looking up other people's licenses to make sure they are who they say they are and notifying the hospitals or healthcare organizations if they're posting inappropriate things. And I'm like, wait a minute, wow. wait, what are we doing here? Right. Like, who? First of all, it's the hospital's <laughs> job to do that or the BRN. Right. But now you got this cancel culture, girl. And honestly, I be wanting to clench my pearls when I'm on TikTok, like, oh, the ghetto, girl. <laughs> Cause they too messy for me. Right, right. right. They are. That's why I'm, I'm like, like I'm TikTok. Yeah. TikTok is a lot. Girl, I'm about to I mean, they so drama filled. And yes. I'm just like, okay, I'm trying to figure I'm like playing double dutch, like what okay, we're right. not getting in that because I'm not gonna be given into that mm -hmm. drama. I'm not mm -hmm. gonna be listen, I'm on here to get exposure, right. to talk about the nursing things in a theoretical from a theoretical frame, right? right. A lens. Mm -hmm. I am not wanting to tackle somebody or bring somebody down or determine who's doing what and it's just too much <laughs> yes. and I mean it's way worse on TikTok I feel like Instagram you got people whatever but like yeah 
baby, on TikTok, they just like, so as I'm, you know, growing on that platform, I'm like being very intentional to like not get involved with mess, still speak my truth. And you know what I feel as far as our profession, but like, I just feel like it's just getting to the point where it's getting out of hand. And I don't know that. And then you have, you know, the bullying. It's just. I wonder, I mean, other professions have to go through this. Are we that messy of a profession? No, <laughs> you know messy? what? Okay. <laughs> we we only see nursing because we're in it. And I do know right. that. And I will say that. So, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't see no doctors doing this. I'm sorry. And see, and what people don't understand, these nurses and these influencers, the ones at the top, 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 hundreds of thousands of followers, millions of followers, they're eating. So mm-hmm. th- people are trying to get there, but they don't realize it's kind of a, a crab in a barrel mentality for those who are on the bottom mm-hmm. because they're trying to get to the top so they can get the brand deals and they can get, yeah. you know, they can ma- really, really monetize their page. Right. But they're doing it a way that I don't agree with, which is, like I said, the crab in a barrel, like really stepping mm-hmm. on others. And see what they're missing. This comes from the PhD hat that I'm about to put on mm-hmm. right now. We are already challenged with our positioning in the sciences and to be taken seriously Mm -hmm. and every time they do stuff like this it shows that it's female dominant Mm. this is the whole cattiness the whole bickering yes and it's the and what they don't understand is divide and conquer now the LVNs pitted against the RNs in some cases. Yeah. So we're really nurses. We're the, are the RNs against the MSNs or mm-hmm. whatever mm-hmm. they want to come and I don't like that. I don't rest in that. And maybe it's maybe I'm dating myself as far as my age, but it's just like they're not realizing the impact it has on our profession though. Yeah. And when we're trying to fight for things like full practice authority and to mm-hmm. be able to practice to the fullest. Um, extent of our training these are the things they're gonna be able to pull out and say y'all not ready yeah y'all not ready because y'all arguing over (laughs) (laughs) nothing that even matters right as hard as they were fighting on that call that we attended for us to not get full practice authority you know yes they're like see see in a minute they're gonna revoke (laughs) they'll start taking away from us because we acting fools out here on social media so what would you suggest to nurses um as far as how to handle their social media let's talk about like what suggestions do we have because we don't want to get censored to where we can't even record in the hospital um because there are are a lot of good things that we can highlight about our day or Mm -hmm. what we're going through or what we're doing um so how do we start to kind of educate nurses on what not to do on their social media. Yeah. So I, first of all, I have to, I want people to be intentional with their social media. There is a lot of Mm -hmm. value and a lot of leverage. And this is free. All we have to do is turn on that little camera and point (laughs) and lip sync and we yeah. can get exposure to a, and in front of a lot of people that could grow a business that we have. Right. Um, I believe sharing our story, I believe there the benefit of it, like what happened with Redonda Vault, like us being able to combine collectively gather in support mm-hmm. of, of a nurse or, you know, black nurses um on um in DC, like we've been able to collectively come together for a common mission. I love that. But I think we dummy down our profession with not even the jokes, like be funny, like all of that. Great. Like, but we have to, first of all, remember the climate that we're in right now, just healthcare and and, um, healthcare in general. And people are not even willing to pay us our worth. So we're basically validating their positions when we behave like we are not educated people. So I just say like, just, I don't, I don't feel like there should be any restrictions per se, but like, if you wouldn't do it in front of your patients, because those are the people who could be seeing your TikTok. If you wouldn't do it in front of the Mm C-suite, don't do it on social media. 
Keep yeah. your problems or whatever things you need to talk to. Because one thing I did, I I heard on um, one of the podcasts that I, we were looking at before we started this conversation, one of them was somebody said, you know, and I've heard this before, it's okay to like talk, talk amongst your colleagues and, you know, like when you're home and you want to talk to like your spouse mm-hmm. or your significant other in general, like, of course, not violating HIPAA, but like just having that conversation, that's okay. But my thing is like, what is the difference? I mean, yes, they put it out on social media on on TikTok, but like if what they're basically saying is that these nurses did this and that's why all these people had these horrible experiences. So if you're saying that, then whether they did it at home or are on social media or amongst each other, you're saying that this is the result. They're how they feel is the is led to these people having these horrible experiences that they did have. But like that's what you're saying. So what is it? What does it matter? I, I don't agree that they did it, by the way. I'm going to keep saying that because I don't, but I'm just saying like from a nurse's perspective, we just have to understand that we are held under a different microscope. Mm-hmm. And just if you wouldn't do it in front of your patients or the C-suite, just don't do it. Yeah. Just don't do it. Because I, that's, I mean, I whether we like it or not, they're coming for us. So exactly. Go ahead. Yeah, I think that's good advice to just keep your patients in mind that these are people who could potentially be watching. Um and then if you wouldn't do it in front of management, then just, just don't post it. Um, we just have to keep in mind our profession and try to uphold it. I mean, it's so, it's so weird mm-hmm. because, you know, they always have like the little memes of like, um, talking about as nurses and like, um, like I don't want to say the nurse travel pack, but like this nurse starter kit, like the nurse starter kit. I know they have one for military too, but like the nurse starter kit or like, um, there was a meme with the guy. I don't know if you saw, he was like, I don't want to date a nurse. I don't want anybody. He was like, anyone who's thinking about going to nursing school, anyone who applied to go to nursing school. It's like, why do we have that rap? It's like, I don't know. Like people, people celebrate us and then people, put us down and think so many ways of us at the, at the same time. Um, so yeah, yeah, Yeah. just try to act your profession and just try to keep in mind that, um, you know, as, as Wendy Williams will say, like there's certain things called, you know, there's, there's a certain thing as kitchen table talk and some things you have to keep to kitchen table talk and, um, and, and not, and think about your patients who could, you know, be listening and, and the effect it would, it would have on them. It's just infor- unfortunate that we would, you know, people, I don't want to be censored, but unfortunately, um, you know, I don't want to sound like, well, this is the career you chose, you know, <laughs> like you chose this. Um, yeah. but we just, but it's, yeah. it's not about, um, like, it's not about lifting ourselves up. It's about lifting the profession up. So, you know, sometimes you just yeah. have to take one for the team, take one for the profession. And yes, you might really want to post that. Um, and yes, you didn't sign up for nursing to be censored, but also you have to think about the profession yeah. as a whole, and what we're trying to do and how we're trying to build this profession yeah. and keep it what it is for the most part. Yeah. Or improve it and not make it worse. Right. You don't want to yeah. <laughs> degrade it. And then, yeah. and then, like, stay away from, like, things that could be triggering for patients. Like, that is triggering for a lot of patients, you know. And um, even though I don't agree they should have been fired, per mm-hmm. se, there should have been consequences. Because especially women who are having babe, like, that that right there, that that wasn't a good thing to do. You know, and so, and I've seen other ones like that's been even more egregious. Um, Mm. One of them where a nurse was saying she was going to unplug the vent to plug charge up her phone. I'm just like, dude, this is getting too much. So, you know, just, oh my God, she posted it. Like, and this is the thing they're doing it to just get likes. Like that's Mm -hmm. the part that I just. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I I know people are probably going to be like, well, she says she gets it. Yes. This is really how I feel. Like I do right. feel like she, they shouldn't have got fired, but at the same time, I yeah. feel like they were wrong. I yeah. don't feel like the f- punishment fit the crime, but at the same time, from a collective perspective, I do feel like a lot of nurses are doing way too much on mm-hmm. these social media. And, and especially when you're an employee. Yes. Yep. You can't move like you want to, right, even as right. an employer, because, you know, that could be bad if they tried to cancel you. But like, you know, you just you just you're an employee, so you can't just move about as you so please, especially when it comes to the patients you're supposed to be caring for. So, yeah. 
Absolutely. Well, this has been great. Yay. A very impromptu. Yes. Yes. We're going to do more of these, you guys. Give us some feedback on um, if you enjoy our little hot topics. Like, I'm going to call it hot topics. Like hot that. nurse topics. Right. <laughs> we'll kind of jump on some of the trends and give our perspective. And we like to give it from the nurse's side because I don't Absolutely. feel like it's enough of us vocal about these things. Um, there has been some nurses speaking on it. I just don't feel like it's been enough. So to people who are out there listening who may not be a nurse, um, I just want you guys to know that just because we have icks or annoyances um, that does not translate to, to patient care, does not translate to all nurses, um, we do need to be more sensitive to to patients and the experience. And it is a very vulnerable time. Um, like you were saying, same thing yeah. in ER because it gets, you know, People always think like, wow, you work in the ER, you must see so many exciting things. And like, really, after the first year or two, it becomes the same things over and over again. So, yes, we do have to remind ourselves um, that this is the patient's first time going through this. Um, mm -hmm. But it does take a lot to continuously um, give the same um, energy each time where we have a new patient with mm -hmm. this new thing that they're going through. So I just want to say that that. Um, you know, nurses have their annoyances, but it should not. And 99% of the time does not translate into how we care for our patients, our patients or what we think about our patients. I agree. And I just, you know, if you start feeling like, and this is for the nurses, if you start feeling like you are becoming desensitized, it may be ch time to change a specialty. Maybe you need to yeah. get into something that re-energizes you, reinvigorates your love for nursing. Um, yeah. We all, even though we all complain <laughs> yeah. about nursing to some extent and being nurses, we really truly love our profession. And I really got into it because I love my patients, mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah, you need to pay me. Don't, I'm not apologizing right. for that at all. But I, I, I gave my patients so much and even still do in my own practice. So I am yeah. not, I don't, I'm not on the side of, I'm on the side of the patient. Okay. Yeah. Um, because this wasn't a patient they were treating this way, but they were just speaking of their experiences. That's the only reason why I say it, the, it was such a harsh punishment. But at the same time, you know, you guys, we have options. You don't have to stay in the mm -hmm. unit that you don't like, you can always change the unit. And sometimes we do get fatigued and we're mm -hmm. human. A lot exactly. of these people who are critiquing us couldn't even spend a, a, a month, a day in yes. our shoes and the things that we endure yes. as nurses. So yes. it is what it yes. is. And that, yeah, that's what I wanted to just say to people to just know that nursing is a hard job. Um, and give us a little bit of grace. We just need a little bit of grace. Um, yes. so yeah, that's yes. all I have to say for today's episode. I want everyone to, to please leave us a comment. Um, you guys are listening. You guys are liking. We totally appreciate that subscribing. Um, but leave us a comment too. Let us know what you liked, what topics you want us to talk about. Um, and Anybody you're going to refer, anybody you know yes. needs to hear this, because this is a hot one. And um, we, we, everybody needs to, I mean, you know, different perspectives for sure. I'm not saying yeah. just go with what we're saying, but yeah. definitely this is something that you guys can have conversations about because we are the ones who decide our profession. And I want you guys to know that as much as it seems like it's the healthcare, it's us, it's ours, we own it. Yeah. But yeah. with ownership also comes responsibility. And so we have to be responsible for the way we are perceived from the outside. And that yes. is extremely important. So on that note, we are going to head out. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Again, make sure you subscribe, you like, you share. And until next time, guys, we'll see you later on the Nurse Boss Shift. Bye. Bye.